Hello guys, my name is TJ. Uh, since there aren't many reviews on the YouTube channel about this brand new bike, it's a Suzuki Vistrom. It's a thousand cc bike. It's the new model. Um, if you want to have a look around, just ask and I'll show you around. But uh, I'll be going over the options I have for this bike and why I didn't buy the other ones. Um, first off on my list is the crash bars. So we have the crash bars. The reason why that is is for mounting different amount of options. And yeah, if you're going off road, they're really sturdy. They don't move or something like that. Uh, did keep camera Im image. So another thing you see is the center stance. It's down here. Uh, it's a must-have, especially when you're working on the bike. It makes a lot of easy work. Um, it's quite really easy. I weigh about 65 kilos and I just need to use my weight put it, to put it on the center stand. So on uh, some bikes you really need to lift the bike up to put it on. So that's really great. Uh, moving on, we have the hand guards. They're a bit small if you ask me, but they'll do the, the job and keep your fingers dry in the rain. So another thing is Suzuki has their heated grips and they ask about 250 euros for it uh, in my opinion I bought these for 80 euros and I placed them myself they work even the same and Suzuki gives their own control as well so if it's for aesthetics it's the same so these are from Oxford they're the sport version they work really great. I uh, haven't had any problems with them so far. On my previous bike I had them as well and they worked for three years. So that's the reason why I bought them once again. Um, this one arrived yesterday. Um, my GPS. It's a Garmin Zumo 660LM for lifetime map updates. I uh, haven't tried this really out, I was planning on doing so today, but then it started raining and I, since I don't want to clean the bike once again, I'll probably extend it for tomorrow and make some footage for you guys as well. Uh, for the display settings and all the rest, I'll make a separate video because it's quite a lot of information. Um, I have the standard screen. It's on the highest settings, I'm on 1 meter 68. It's a bit small for 1 meter 68, but it's just about halfway your helmet that the wind still catches. So that's not really an issue for me because I like a little bit of wind. Um, another few options I have are stickers. Since uh, this might be empty uh, I bought the stickers to fill this up They're quite nice actually if you ask me uh, another piece of sticker I bought was uh, for the side of the tank is a fully covered sticker on it you just see the edges right now because it's a bit dirty um, just because your nails are here and you don't want to scratch your tank they're quite clear and uh, you don't really notice that they're there um, another sticker I have is for the lower frame protection since my boots you can see that uh, my boots already chipped off a piece while shifting up um, I cut quite sharp on the edges uh, still this is plastic and the frame is behind it so yeah uh, just for insurance uh, I didn't bought the uh, rim stickers because they're white and on Greece they probably won't last for long especially when you're driving every day to work in the rain uh, if you're going on weekend trips uh, it's not always great weather in Belgium so uh, another option that I didn't took was uh, the fog lights the reason why I didn't bought the fog lights because they were 650 euros and I did some uh, Look, uh, I did some googling and uh, I found the same set on a local store in uh, in, in a country nearby for 350 euros, including shipment, and they're being shipped from America. So, 
yes, they're made in the U.S. Uh, and they're driving lamps, not fog lamps, and it makes a big difference in uh, beam distance. So um, that's a lot of money saved. Um, I'm gonna make a quick look on what's next to come. So I don't know. I will be right back. Hello, we're back. Sorry about that. My uh, phone went off. Um, starting off uh, again, the brakes. Uh, on the previous model, um, a lot of people complained that the brakes weren't biting enough. I can assure you on this model, they do. Um, uh, combined with the ABS pump, you don't have to be a lot afraid that your front wheel is going to skip away uh, because the ABS is too slow. Uh, it's the same for the rear. Um, I'll show you on the rear. It's a single caliper. I hope you guys can see this. Um, Tokyo. It has quite a lot of bite, but uh, if you ask me, the ABS kicks really, really fast in the rear, and you might have the feeling that uh, you aren't really braking on the rear. Um, that's just my opinion. Another opinion of mine, I have been riding quite a lot of bikes uh, on quite a different sit uh, scenario, so these brake pads, they're like in the middle. You have brake pads that are for racing use, they brake gently, and if they get hotter, they will brake harder. Um, you have the soft brake pads, they just brake constant. Uh, even and these ones if they get hot or it's a moisture day or something like that if it's raining they need to get warm before they really start to break again so I might be changing these over to soft ones because I like to have the feeling that when I need to break I can break without breaking them in so uh, it's the same for the rear um, yeah um, for APS wise, you shouldn't be too worried. Um, you'll feel the, the the wheels jam for about a half a second, and then you feel in the levers that the APS pump is kicking in. Um, but after the first jam, the APS pump will keep preventing the wheel from jamming up. So that's something you need to get a little bit confidence in but if you after you have that confidence you won't have any problems with real scenario braking so so now we're gonna talk about the engine uh, I did have my first service on it um, I have the bike for over a week um, I already did about 1300 kilometers on it so there you can see I use the bike quite often um, and let's see, uh, it's a V, it's a 1000cc bike, it's about 100 horsepower, 106 newton meters. Um, I've been really gentle on the engine for the first 1000 kilometers. I haven't tried it out quite fast, but uh, I can assure you right now that, that there's enough usable power. It's not a sports bike, so most people compare these engines with sport bikes, but uh, if you want to compare it like it's um, when you're driving really calmly and you need to accelerate from let's say 3000 rpm to the end of the ref uh, from about 4000 rpm you will have the same amount of power on a sport bike when you're low in uh, an rpm and you twist the throttle fully open and when you're climbing in rpms just the more power you will have this is not with this engine, but it's still exciting enough to have fun with it. Um, the clutch is super. I don't have any annoying vibrations or uh, shocks in the rear when driving at 2000 RPM, so it's definitely doing its work. It's a slipper clutch, if you haven't heard about it. Um, to the traction control part of the engine as well as the fuel economy uh, traction control if you leave it in uh, safe settings so no backspin um, 
you, if you're driving on gravel like this, uh, you can definitely feel that the engine is uh, adjusting its timing, is adjusting its fuel injection um, to prevent the back wheel from slipping through. Uh, if you're on gravel, I wouldn't recommend it to set it, set it in safe mode because if you're driving too slow or too low in RPM, the engine will shut off because yeah, it's delaying its engine so so hard that. Uh, it's not running anymore. Uh, then you have a second setting where it, which allows some wheel spin. Um, I prefer the second, second uh, traction control setting, uh, even on, on, on the roads. Um, to give you an idea, when it kicks in, um, if you're in first or second and you put the throttle completely open, you feel the front wheel lifting up for about 10 centimeters and then the traction control kicks in really slowly like um, you're just putting your throttle a little bit back so the front wheel comes down um, so for that instance it's more suitable for light dirt roads um, and road use if you're going fully off road yeah just turn everything off just one thing, you can't turn ABS off on this bike, so that's a little complaint I have. I might be finding a little mod on this, just put out a fuse of the ABS pump or something like that. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's right, about first thing off. Sorry about the jump cuts, but uh, apparently everyone's trying to call me right now. Uh, don't really know why, but uh, it's quite annoying. Uh, we're moving off to the uh, suspension. Uh, when you first have this bike, I really recommend just turn this knob two times to harden the rear suspension because it's quite soft. I don't weigh a lot of kilos. It's about 65, 66, depends on morning or evening. It's a real um, difference in handling especially in uh, tight turns um, if you're the roads in Belgium aren't too great they're full of potholes loose gravel and stuff like that um, if a sp suspension is a bit harder you can feel what your wheel is doing uh, combined with the traction control real wheels tails put um, I must admit the front wheel doesn't have any traction control so that's purely on the feelings you uh, have to do what you have to do um, rear suspension is in my opinion really great as a long travel distance um, it doesn't feel springy doesn't feel hard and doesn't feel damped or yeah it's just like an average sport bike suspension but then for street um, or for uh, adventure bikes, so they probably put some money in it, and uh, I really I'm really happy they did. So let's move on to the front ones. I hope you guys can see this, but uh, a lot of cables. But these ones are three-way adjustables. You have the tension, you have the stiffness, and you have the pre-bound damping. Um, I haven't played with them yet, uh, they probably will be sometime, um, I still actually need to figure out how they work, so there's a little knob here, you can adjust the inbound and outbound tension, um, yeah I still really need to figure out how they work how do you adjust them and if I know how to do it because my manual is in German and I don't really speak as good as German as I used to uh, I'll probably make a video about it to give you guys an idea uh, what to look out for and what to feel for so that's about for the suspension um, 